Ahoy! Welcome to the festival bubbles of the 62nd edition of the Zlint Film Festival, where we welcome all the time some of the most exciting, most amazing, most sparkling guests of the 2022 edition. We have two of those uh, sparkling guests today here with us. We have Johannes Schmidt, who's the director of a film called Tales of France. And we have Katharina Posch, who's the producer of the film. And I've been told that uh, Katharina is also able to resume the story of the film in, let's say, five sentences, so that we all know what type of film we're talking about. And it would be great if you used the microphone to do that and share the story of the film with us. Well, in five sentences, um, let's see. Uh, the story is about a little boy called Franz and his uh, problems uh, he has with being always the smallest in class, um, being um, not able to express himself properly because he's getting a beepy voice when he is in school and uh, has to confront his teacher. And all along with these problems, um, he's searching for new solutions to, to get through life, obviously. And um, as we tell the story uh, in contemporary Vienna, uh, he discovers a, in, an influencer, we call it, a YouTuber. And uh, obviously he's telling him the wrong uh, advices and uh, he is uh, trying to, uh, yeah, to follow the rules this Hank Haberer is giving him. But as we will see in the movie, it uh, drives to the wrong direction. And those rules are mainly about masculinity, how to be a man and how to stand strong. Exactly, yeah. This is about uh, how to be uh, successful in life because of, uh, I don't know, very um, old fashioned uh, stereotypes. Stereotypes of masculinity and uh, stereotypes of how to be yeah, successful in life. What's your uh, short version, Johannes? Well, if somebody knows how it feels to be successful in life, then it's for sure Johannes Schmidt here with us, because he already made several young audience films. Uh, but this time you're targeting an exceptionally young audience, I think, uh, younger than the other movies that you made, like Bleu de Mütze and Wintertochter. Was there a difference in the making of the film now that you were working with these much younger kids? Yeah, as you, as you told, I did two uh, long feature films uh, with kind of 12-year-old uh, children in the, uh, as main characters and uh, main uh, actors. And um, I always said it's like to, to work with a 12-year-old uh, child, it's like with a normal actor, actually. So it's not so much different in a way. But with a nine-year-old uh, children, it was quite uh, uh, interesting for me. And it was, it's, it's really more anarchy in a way. And it's, it's a lot of energy and a lot of uh, things to get them focused. And you are, uh, you're working in a, in a kind of different way. But it was really, really fun with these with this young, uh, with this young uh, boys and girls. Mm -mm. The topic, as Katharina explained, it's a well-known topic nowadays. Uh, gender roles are often questioned. Also here, already at a very young age, you confront your characters with questions ab about masculinity. You thought this was the right moment to do it? I think absolutely, and it's not so... Uh, it's, it's important that I think the children are really confronted with, with these themes quite early in life, in mm -hmm. a way. And because of the internet and because of the role models, you see, again, in a, in a, in a, quite, in a quite strong way that you are confronted with, with masculinity and toxic masculinity, in a way, again, it's a kind of way which is coming back also from the, if, you, if you're talking about, uh, about uh, right side uh, populism also with, with, a lot of, with, with a lot of toxic male energy in a way. So I think it's quite good to, to tell a story for children in such an age already. And when you are nine, you're, going, you're, you're starting to think about this. And it's kind of, that's a, I have also a nine-year-old, ten-year-old daughter, so that's, uh, it, it's, 
until nine, everybody's playing with everybody. It doesn't matter. And with this age, it started. So yes, that's a, that's a male group of, uh, of pupils, and that's a female group of pupils. So, so it, it starts in this age. So it's, uh, I think it was very uh, good and uh, interesting to do a story for children in this age about the theme, this topic. You are originally German, but living in Scandinavia at the moment. And I heard that you already encountered some cultural differences between the northern part of Europe and the more um, west, like, do you think Scandinavia was already a step ahead uh, compared to the rest of Europe? If, if I watch uh, Scandinavian media or German media, it's really a different in a way because also for children, because uh, in the children program there's a lot of different uh, role models uh, as uh, heterosex heterosexual, homosexual, it's bisexual. So we always, uh, we in Scandinavia has a, <laughs> we, we don't have he and her, we have also one pronoun which is not, which is not uh, gender-based gender and so on. And, and the children really are learning this already in the preschool. So to, to use it, and so this, uh, I think the mindset is, is actually already different. And I don't see it so much in Germany, especially not, or in the German-speaking country, especially not on the screen. I think mm -hmm. the society and the, the living is, and the, the people who are living and the children in her, in her, um, uh, in, in the schools and in their situations are probably more uh, used to see things than we see it on the media. Yeah, so society is more advanced than the way it is reflected in media. Um, would it be like very gender stereotype if I ask Katerina about the role of the strong female that you have in the story? Because it's no coincidence that Franz is having a friend, but at a certain time also had a, has to face a friend that is really a strong girl who stands up for her own rights. Yeah, we have, we have a very strong female character, uh, Gabi, who, who is going forward and, and, and normally um, uh, helping out Franz when he's too, I don't know, uh, shy and, 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 uh, and yeah, not capable of, of doing the things. So she's a very strong character, yes. And she's got a lot of fans. We have a really Gabi fan base already. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So she's having an impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has had an impact. My daughter told me I want to have the same uh, trousers, it's called Latzhose in German, mm -hmm. uh, as Gabi wears it. So <laughs> it's already going. So there's here. an interesting line for branding and franchising there, my dear producer. Maybe. <laughs> so next time you'll be investing in, uh, in trousers. Uh, you make Vienna in a way look like. Uh, a small town, very accessible for children who are just like exploring their own neighborhood. I would love you to say something about that, but I would also love you. Uh, I would like you to say something about uh, Zlin as a town as well, because this is also a town much smaller than Vienna, but very accessible for the people living here. And I want to know how you experience it. But first, let's talk about Vienna. Yes, Vienna. I'm, I'm as you as you as you told. I'm. Uh, based in Stockholm, and um, I, uh, originally I'm from Germany. So, actually, when uh, Katarina uh, and the producers in in, in Austria uh, called me, so it was the first time for, and I, I, I traveled to to Vienna. It was the first time for 20 years for me to be in the city, and it was really really exciting to explore it with these Franz eyes, with these eyes of a, of a child and to see how, how, is this, how, how would it be to be a child here in this city. And um, I really liked it because it's, it's a modern big city, but it has kind of village style in some of the districts. And uh, I always, from, from the beginning, was interested to tell a story about children with nine, 10 years old uh, who are starting to live their own, uh, their own lives. They are not only in a, uh, with, her, with the parents all the time, so they're really exploring the city, so they're starting to explore the city or the district um, or this little, this little surrounding around the school um, on, on their own. And that's really interesting uh, for, for, uh, for me. And that's tried to, to, uh, to tell with the story and in the, in the movie. Yeah. Katrina, can you compare 
your uh, impressions on Zlin with your impress uh, with Vienna? <laughs> Uh, well, it is totally different, of course, but I uh, already read a lot about Slin uh, before we came here, and I'm very much interested in the architecture and so on, which is very exceptional in Slin. And I as well discovered this great garden, this park area with the children's uh, square and place, and I, I thought, wow, this is uh, a very modern city, and um, in Vienna, Sometimes we have a problem because it's very historical and there's not a l a no enough space in, mm -hmm. in the areas for the children. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but there's uh, one thing that you should know about Zlin, which has to do with the last question that I will ask you. Zlin is the capital of shoes. So, um, in this uh, Festival Bubbles, we ask all our guests to show us their shoes and maybe Tell a story about you and your shoes. Why these shoes? What's your personal connection with shoes? And it would be most practical if you like put them on the yeah. table. Okay. Yeah, but one by one. Ah, yeah. okay. Okay. You go first, Katrina. I, I you go first. Okay, so my shoes, voila. This um, is... I bought those shoes. Um, I bought those shoes in a small town in Austria and they are made in, uh, in an Austrian region. So they are from Austria, which is very exceptional because the shoe manufacturers uh, all died uh, in Austria, like everywhere in Europe, mainly. Um, and so, yeah, maybe... It's um, a good story, a thank good, you. A good shoe for a slin. But Absolutely. Johannes. Yes, I have a classica on my on my foot here. So it's a it's a gazelle of Adidas, yeah. And it's uh, I had it first time probably in the beginning of the 90s, and this is my I think my third pair of uh, gazelle in the same blue uh, <laughs> I buy. It. So I I'm quite traditional in this way. Yeah? Thank you so much for sharing all these intimate details about you and shoes. This was highly appreciated. Thank you so much also for bringing your film to the Zlin Film Festival, for coming here with us in the studio, and it was a real pleasure to have you here. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the festival, and good luck with the screening this afternoon of Tales of France. Thank you. Thank you.